What's the difference between these two mini discs? Let's find out. Welcome back to Hi-Fi Lo-Fi. It's been way too long. Apologies. I know that you've been waiting and uh, I wasn't really sure what video I was going to do next, but I thought prompted by the comments in one of my last videos, one of my more recent videos, possibly the last video regarding mini discs, I thought I would run a test and there was a comment from a guy called Rod Postlethwaite, thanks for that. His comment, if you can go back and see that comment in the mini disc video I did before, he said that there's no difference between these two and it's all about just presentation, packaging, etc. I'm inclined to go with that theory. I have no reason to uh, not believe that. I, I, that. In fact, that was really something that I was thinking when I bought both of these. I will say the price is slightly different, so not quite sure why the price of each of these items is slightly different, not sure. And uh, I should say this one is slightly more expensive than this one. Now, there was another comment from a guy called, um, I think his name was Tim Vorman, and uh, apologies if I've uh, mispronounced your surname. And he said that this disc is still on sale in Japan in Yodabashi Camera, which is a large electrical retailer, a large store, chain store in Japan that sells electronics and such like. Now, when I was in Yodabashi Camera at the time of making the videos before, I hadn't seen any mini discs on sale in there. However, since making that video, I, I regularly go into electrical stores just to check on things to see what's going on. And lo and behold, I did see these back on sale. So that was in a suburb of Tokyo and uh, Machida to be precise in the west of Tokyo. Now, I've, ne I've also seen these continuously on sale on Amazon. The price fluctuates slightly. You can buy them individually or you can buy them in 10 packs. Interestingly, recent, this is Amazon Japan I'm talking about. Interestingly, recently I have not seen these advertised on Amazon. And I say that because, you know, once you buy something on Amazon or, or look at it, Amazon bombards you with emails and recommendations via the app or if you're logged into the website on your browser and uh, I can't see these anymore on Amazon and I haven't seen these for sale in any stores but so just to recap yes I've not only seen these in Yodabashi camera I've seen these in another chain which I, I regularly go into to have a look that's called Nojima Denki and um, Nojima is also selling these currently. Uh, certainly the last time I went in there very recently. And uh, the, as I say, the price fluctuates. It's somewhere between three and 400 yen per disc, depending on whether you buy them individually or as a 10 pack. There may be five packs, there may be three packs. I see them either sold individually or as 10 packs. The, individually they are in the electrical stores but uh, you can also buy them as a 10 pack on Amazon. Okay, I've been waffling enough, been going on enough about it. So for today's test, what am I going to do? Well, I'll show you what I'm using, the hardware I'm using, and uh, the CD I'm using for this test. So I'm recording from this one. This is uh, an album by a band called Nightwish. I just thought that this was, without a doubt, uh, a very well engineered sound. The sound engineering, the, the mastering is um, very well produced, very well engineered. So that's why I'm using it. And uh, I'll just show you what uh, hardware I'm going to be using. Right, this is the hardware. So 
I'm using as the source, that CD is in my Marantz CD6006, CD6006, and the CD is connected to the mini disc player via a TOS link, that's an optical digital cable. It's connected at the back, trust me, it really is. So the CD data is being taken straight from the CD player straight into the mini disc player. The mini disc player recorder is, as you can see down here, if I can focus in on that. So it's Sony MDS JB940. MDS JB940. Not the very top of the range from Sony, but it is quite high up, or it was, because I don't make them anymore. Uh, it, it was reasonably high up in Sony's range. I think it sounds pretty good. I, I'm very impressed with the sound. And for mini disc enthusiasts, you probably know all about it, but there you go, some more information there. If you are interested and you don't know anything about it, just uh, there's a close-up view of this mini disc deck. So today is not a review of the mini disc deck. Today is just to simply see, or simply if we can discern the difference between those two mini discs. I strongly suspect the answer is no, I don't think we can, and um, let's find out. Right, first up is the, well, the slightly more premium looking Sony MD80. And uh, this one here is uh, another one that's still wrapped, I haven't unwrapped it. Uh, this is the identical one. Um, taken out of its wrapper and here out of its case and going into the mini disc deck. So we're going to record so we'll press the record button and when you press the record button it seems that it does a pretty standard thing and go into a standby record mode. If we get a bit closer here, you can see there are adjustments that can be made. So there is a record level. Now, if you adjust the record level, interestingly, by the way, I should say before that, that the input, so if I select the input, you should be able to see on the display, optical two, coaxial, analog in, optical one. So the CD player below, as I said, is connected via a TOS link, that's an optical digital, into, directly into the back of the deck here, and it, uh, it knows it's connected, it's, it's recognized that, and it's waiting for me to start the source, that is to say the CD. CD lined up, uh, track two from that album I just showed you. And this means, by the way, that the source material is not going via the amp. And although I'll be listening via the amp, I'll show you that in a moment, uh, the amp and the speakers, just remember that the source material is direct from the CD player into the mini disc deck. So hopefully the minimum signal path needed to record the information. Back to that record level, so I can adjust the record level. Now, if I, if you can see, if I adjust it, it will adjust. I'm not sure how, how much I can adjust it. I've never tried. But being that I'm recording optical, digital, I thought better just to leave it on zero, not to take away anything, not to add anything. I'm assuming that is the optimum setting. And record mode, by the way, if you're interested in that, 
the record mode if you look if I press that mono stereo long play 2 and like a lot of later not even that late but a lot of uh, later generation mini disc recorders and players there's a long play 4 mode obviously a much greater compression and not something I would recommend but very good if you're just having background music and you can't be bothered to uh, change the disc and you don't care about sound quality. I'm hoping that when I press play on here it will automatically recognize it but I could be wrong let's find out. I wish I So there we are, it did not do that as you can see, it did not automatically start recording. So it looks like I'm going to have to manually start recording. I thought that there would be some sort of detection in the mini disc deck that once it received a signal via the optical path, it would start recording. Let's have a look, let's have a closer look and see what I can find well, I couldn't find anything on the deck itself, and uh, here's the immense remote control. Uh, it really is rather large. If you look uh, at that next to the deck, it's a massive control. It's quite uh, quite incredible. Um, I'm sure Sony could have uh, reduced the amount of functions or buttons or something. I think it's way too big. And uh, yes, I am one of those people that leaves it in the plastic for its own protection. Uh, the less said, the better on that topic. Right, so, couldn't, yeah, I couldn't find anything on that uh, control, on that, with all those buttons, you think there'd be something on there, but no, there isn't. So it looks like I'm going to have to manually start rec recording the old fashioned way, as in uh, just, let's, let's line it up again. Right, it's lined up ready to record track two and it looks like I'm going to have to manually start the recording now I haven't done this before this is my first time to do it on this deck so I guess I'm pressing that and of course when I want the CD track to start I'm going to have to uh, press play on there now normally what I do to ensure that I get a really good uh, recording without any silence at the beginning. Normally what I do is I start to play it. I wish I had an angel then I pause it, then I go back, and that now means that it's on pause. So the disc itself, the CD is spinning, and it's lined up, the laser is lined up at the beginning of track two. That means that when a press play it will be instantaneous and there won't be any delay while the uh, deck finds the selected track and then lines up the laser with the start of the music. So I'm assuming then I just need to press play on this deck to get the recording going and uh, let's see what happens and then I'm going to instantly front move my finger instantly down to this button here. So let's see what happens when I do that. Success. Well, I'll turn that down because the purpose of this video is not to play music, and uh, obviously, you cannot appreciate subtle differences in sound quality over a YouTube video, especially one recorded on a handheld iPad uh, on my living room floor. So we'll let that play, we'll let that uh, record the first track on the mini disc, which is track two on the CD by the way, I know that. So I'm just gonna let that record and then I'm going to record the exact same track again on the other mini disc. 
be back soon. That was the uh, selected track recorded onto a MIDI disc, onto the MD-80, onto uh, this one. And just uh, for your information, um, as I said, it won't make any difference to the recording because there's a direct signal path via the Toslink. And uh, sorry to keep uh, reminding you, uh, there is a lot of repetition going on here, but uh, yeah. That it's uh, these are connected via a Toslink, but uh, I'm of course listening via an amp. So I've got my pre-main amp here. Uh, in that's an integrated amplifier, and uh, it's the uh, Yamaha S A three hundred one, or is it a S three hundred one? I can never remember. Hang on, what does it say there? Yeah, it's an A S three hundred one. If you can. Uh, see that there we are and uh, I'm listening well I've got the um, I'm just listening to the CD through the CD option now this amp has dedicated CD input the speakers I'm using are these Dali Oberon 5s which are extremely good I'm very happy with these excellent value for money and uh, the Dali Oberon 5s, I think, uh, perform extremely well, except the amp, I find, is a little underpowered for what the speakers require. I think that the speakers probably could do with a higher powered amp, and I should have uh, gone for the 801, not the 301, and I'm sort of regretting that now, but anyway. Uh, it was just about uh, saving money when I bought the 301 and I just assumed there wouldn't be a whole lot of difference but uh, I strongly suspect the 801 would uh, bring out a much richer sound experience. There's obviously uh, an option as you can imagine to input data, in, you know, put in the uh, names and the, the artists, the tracks and all that. Uh, there is even a keyboard input there. Now I haven't seen a keyboard like that for a very long time. The last time I saw a keyboard with that connection was uh, on an old Windows PC from about 20 years ago. So uh, my my keyboards these days, uh, well actually they're, they're Bluetooth. Uh, I use a Bluetooth one now, but the my older keyboard I'm uh, using on an old uh, computer is um, USB. So uh, yeah, it's been a very long time since I've seen a connection so this is really uh, indicative of the era from which this mini disc deck comes from, which is the 90s. So uh, yeah, back in the 90s, um, that would have been, I think the late 90s, certainly possibly a Windows 98 PC I had used a connection like that for the keyboard. But uh, anyway, um, I don't have a keyboard like that anymore. So uh, probably something I could pick up somewhere and uh, I may well look into it because um, it would be a lot easier just to type the stuff in using a keyboard instead of this uh, crazy control or even doing things uh, on the on the deck. There is a way of doing it apparently, but it would take forever with the uh, this uh, control here and whatever else is necessary. So I was thinking before recording on the next disc, I should at least play back the first recording to see how it compares with the original CD. And remember, it is an original CD. It's not a recording. It's not a download. It is an original CD. So I have got the mini disc deck connected to the amp and it is connected via the optical. So there's an optical input on the amp here. And I've got everything set to pure direct mode. There's no uh, equalization or tone controls in operation. I haven't touched the volume control. So let's listen. Well, I'm going to listen. It won't make a big difference to you on a YouTube video, on a handheld iPad, 
on my living room floor but uh, let's find out uh, if there's any discernible difference now surely a mini disc even something as great as this deck cannot reproduce accurately an original CD recording let's uh, see what happens I wish I Well, I have to say, it sounds pretty good. Not as good as the CD, but we weren't expecting it to be that good. But I think that uh, if you were, I mean, if you're really seriously an audiophile sitting down to listen to a high quality piece of music, then yeah, you uh, would not be satisfied with that. But if you are, or certainly back in the day when you were recording stuff, recording CDs, copying CDs, then uh, that would have been, I think, a, a certainly an adequate way to do it. Um, you know, the next best thing to owning the CD, perhaps. Uh, anyway, so I'm just going to remove that. I was doing the tape, the TOC, TOC, Table of Contents, I know what that is. So we'll remove that and, um, right, that goes there. So I've I've unwrapped the, the other Sony 80 Minute, the, the Basic. Uh, it's called Basic, that's why I'm calling it Basic. And uh, that was the one I just used. So we'll take it out of its case, put it in the machine, brand new, never been used. Both of these mini discs are brand new, never been used, never been recorded on. So we're going to do the same test again. I won't bore you with all the details this time. I'm just going to start recording it and uh, let you know what happens. So everything will be exactly the same on the setup and uh, everything will be, all the settings are the same, no changes there. The only difference is that I've used uh, this disc this time. So uh, I'll be back in a moment to play back. I'm not going to bore you with the recording. Play back this one and uh, then I'll do try to play them side by side. On the same machine, of course, so it'll be a case of taking one out and putting the other one back in. Right, so just recorded the same track with the exact same settings, everything identical, onto the other mini disc. I shall now play it back and see what I think of the sound quality. Now, obviously it won't sound as good as the CD, and will it sound any better or any worse or exactly the same as the other mini disc? So I'm gonna have to, uh, to do this, I'm gonna have to uh, change the setting back to optical and uh, listen through the amp and speakers. So uh, let's play that. I wish I had an angel for one moment of love. I wish I had your angel Right, so that was uh, listening to the MD, this MD uh, 
recording and just to uh, play back to pack let's take this one out let's put uh, this one straight back in that I recorded earlier let's uh, listen and uh, see if we can hear anything different I'll turn the volume up for my own benefit. So I've concluded my test and as suspected, there is no discernible difference between these two discs. And I guessed as much. Uh, but I was curious, I wasn't 100% sure until I conducted that test just now. And uh, thanks to Rod for your comment on that, you were right. So, still don't really know what the point of having two different packaged items that are essentially the same. Now, I suppose somebody could run a technical test, a scientific test with laboratory equipment and uh, check the uh, minute discrepancies in uh, signal data and such like but uh, I always think that regardless of what the science says what can you hear what do your ears tell you and uh, my ears tell me that there is no difference between these two products uh, despite this one looking premium and costing a little bit more and this one looking less premium, costing a little bit less, and even being called basic, which has some sort of connotation of an inferior product. But no, don't notice any difference between these two products. Just uh, out of curiosity, I uh, after playing these uh, just now, I then went back and I played the CD track again, just uh, out of curiosity to compare the CD, the original CD track with the MD tracks. And uh, yeah, I mean, when you obviously, when you listen to, especially a really good CD recording like that, uh, clearly the uh, limitations of mini disc are apparent when you're listening back to back. However, uh, I do, still say it is a good deck it does have a good sound and um, back in the day I think it was really uh, a worthy product for copying CDs onto and um, you know the next best thing perhaps to the original CD back in the 90s before we really got into digital um, copying with computers and software and such like. I still enjoy it. I still enjoy using a mini disc deck. I've still got loads of old mini discs which I've shown you in a previous video and I still enjoy um, the the experience, not just the listening, but I just enjoy the, uh, the whole hands-on and uh, it's an experience basically and um, yeah, uh, I still enjoy it. Not just for, it's got the nostalgia aspect to it, but it's also uh, you know, just some of us like machines, some of us like tech, some of us like gadgets, and um, that's why we like it. So there we are, this has been Hi-Fi Lo-Fi, uh, another scientific test conducted with uh, my ears, and thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll get another video a lot sooner this time. Hopefully we won't have to wait, uh, I don't know what it was, it's been about two two or more months I believe so yeah I shall uh, do my best to get another video to you as soon as possible stay tuned